Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. I thought I'd take today, nice sunny day. It's uh, just come from about 15 degrees overnight. Temperatures now in the mid 30s Fahrenheit. And it's gonna be, so it's still pretty darn chilly. And uh, I just wanted to show you something that uh, a friend of mine, Mark Reif Schneider, uh, told me about he uh, he built this uh, long long hive for me and the the long hive it's a nice design in terms of being nice and level everything at one height and all the frames are parallel with each other all the way across the only problem with a long style long hive style hive in my view in these in this sort of climate is that your cluster needs to always be big enough in order to stay warm enough to move from frame to frame to frame as the cluster moves to get new honey. In contrast with the taller Langstroth hive, the cluster can just move up the frames. There's no obstacles in the way. So even a small cluster between, literally between two frames can just move right up and eat honey if it's warm enough to keep itself warm. Whereas on a long hive, the cluster has to be big enough to actually get around each frame. And so in my view, and I don't have any evidence to support it, just logic as a uh, zoologist, it's that the cluster has to be big enough and therefore, and warm enough to generate enough heat to get from frame to frame to frame. And that is its biggest obstacle to survival. And therefore, anything that we can do to help keep that cluster warm in a sort of steady state is going to help it survive and move from frame to frame to get access to the food through the hive. Now this design is really good in that there's a, about two inches of insulation in the roof so you can tell it's pretty good the snow's not even melted off the top. The walls are really thick they're an inch and a half thick of wood as opposed to three quarters of an inch in our normal um, hives. I've not added extra insulation, but I wanted to do another trick that uh, Mark told me that a friend of his told him about. And that was, in effect, to use this space underneath to act like a little greenhouse. I thought, that's a neat idea, and what a great way for doing another video. So I also wanted to do something so that we could look at its effect. And as I say, the temperature here is... Um, in the mid 30s still about 37 degrees or so and I wanted to just put this thermometer near the hive I just want to suspend it so that I can uh, have access to it and have a look at the temperature that we're generating so I'm just going to attach this here hopefully right so the thermometer is now attached the front of the hive and it's going to be measuring the air temperature below the hive currently 37 36 37 degrees but now what I'm going to do is effectively use this space below the hive to make a little greenhouse and all we're going to do is use a bit of plastic wrap I've not tried this before so forgive me if I have to do it a couple of times to try and get it right but let's see how it goes. I'll start off by just tying some to the leg itself. And the other thing I want to do is to help sort of shed the weather. So I'll work, try to work from the bottom up. And if necessary to make everything stay in place, I brought a stapler along just in case. So let's see how things go. So what we're doing here is just building a little transparent wall. You get the idea now. Uh 
try and do it without that for now. Yeah, we do. And to try and stop it sliding up the structure, I try and pin it in place. tear a bit. Okay, so what we've done is effectively make a miniature greenhouse here. Now, I suppose ideally I'd take it a bit lower down, but what we now have is the ability here to shelter it from wind, but also to generate heat just through solar action. And uh, I may go around and do a lower level but if we have some more snow it's going to bury it there but we're going to trap warm air underneath the hive warming up the bottom and although the bottom is an inch and a half thick it'll give some extra heat to the bottom of the hive and that wood will hold that temperature for a little while and I suppose we could make it even more effective by drilling holes in the bottom to let more heat in but uh, let's see if we can see any difference already. It's only been five minutes. And the temperature's already up to near 40 degrees. So we'll keep it here. I think we're gonna put a bit more plastic around here to get the, the gap in here a little bit better. So we'll do a bit more, see what we can do. So there we have it, hopefully that'll work and we'll see the benefits of it in terms of generating a little bit of heat. And I'll keep on checking the thermometer every now and then and see if we generate 
much extra heat below the hive. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.